Hi there! This is our basics workshop and I'm Kim Oliver. I'm one of the trainers for 2020 Design. Before I landed my dream job here, I was a kitchen and bath designer for about 20 years. Um, there are many, many different ways to perform tasks within the software and in my days of designing and as I've talked with other designers across the US, I've seen again and again how helpful a couple of the tools, most of the tools, are. Um, and so I'd like to highlight one in particular today. Follow me, let's hop into the software, and I'll share the spotlight with one of my favorites. And of course, if you have any questions, go ahead um, and type them in the chat box along the way. We'll be sure to point you in the right direction. We are going to get to know the placement wheel today. You've probably seen it pop up and then disappear, right, from the placement box when you're designing. And maybe you've noticed that when it does appear, it has arrows around it, left, right, up, down, right, all those directions. But have you ever tried to spin that wheel? Okay, no, I hope not. Please don't try to spin it. It doesn't spin. Um, if yours does, I want you to go ahead and call our support team. It should not spin. It's not like the Wheel of Fortune, but it can make your life easier. Since this is a basics session, there's just a couple of other tools that I need to point out as they're going to come into play as little helpers along with the placement wheel too. First things first. Does my screen look maybe a little bit different than how your screen is set up? The actual location of the placement box and that placement wheel, where the wheel lives, right in that little box, can make life a lot easier. So let's be sure to set you up for success right out of the gate. There's a button up in the ribbon bar, up way at the top. That's our ribbon bar way up here. And we're going to get into the View tab, right here, this little tab here, View. In there is a little button called Screen Preset. When I left click on that Screen Preset button, it has a little drop down box. I'm going to go ahead and recommend the leftmost setup. It'll make your screen look like mine. Here's why I recommend it. I really like it. I'm going to go ahead and click it so you're going to see that my screen will change, but don't panic. I'm going to show you leftmost and it's going to reset my screen and just put all of these boxes right here on the left. I like this so that the placement box isn't um, stacked and squished over here. Um, it's also not thrown way over here on the other side of my screen. Now my eyes know exactly where to look for that placement wheel or that placement box. And I always know where to find it. Remember, you can always resize your boxes as well. So if I hover my cursor over these divider lines, the cursor will change to those directional arrows. I can left click and hold and drag, make those boxes a little wider, half the battle my friends, is being able to see what we're working with right here, right? There's a lot going on. So always take a minute and set up your screen. I'm going to keep this placement box nice and big because this is our star of the show right here. Notice that um, it defaulted back to my cloud browser. That's always going to open first, but they're just stacked. My cloud browser and my local browser way down here. These tabs at the bottom, they're just stacked right on top of each other. So if I left click on that local browser tab, it'll pull that right back up. Okay, so I hope that that's helpful. Screen setup first and foremost. And then if your boxes ever disappear on you, don't panic. We're just going to head right on up to that view tab. Open that up, get over to screen preset. Left click, choose left most. It'll rearrange and bring back up all your boxes right exactly where you know that they should go. It's a preset template for that layout. It's been programmed in there. You'll be back in business. Okay, one more little helper tool is way down at the bottom of your screen in the orange bar. This one's also going to affect 
the way that the placement wheel functions. And so let's just take a quick, a quick little detour. Way over down here. See this orange bar way at the bottom right hand corner of your screen? These little icons here, these are called the work area toolbar icons. And the one that I just want to focus on for a second is this first one, the green stacked triangles. These are called in, out, up, down. And they affect everything that's brought into your um, work area. So when we duplicate things, it's duplicated at the same in, out, up, down as the first. Now, when you glance at your screen and you look in that orange bar, if there's nothing there, if you don't see those icons, bring your cursor into that orange bar and right click. Remember that right click always, always, always gets you an options menu. It just gets you more choices, right? Right click. The left click is the one that always performs an action. It always performs a function. Right click just gets you more choices. So when you right click to bring up that little options menu, you'll make sure that there's a check next to these descriptions here. Uh, and so you'll left click to bring in that check mark. We want to make sure that the green triangles are dark around them. They're activated. They're on. If they're not, you can left click on them to turn them on and off. On means it's dark. Off means it's light around it. Does that make sense? It's light around it. It's off. If it's dark around it. It's on. Okay. I think you got it. Um, there's one more little um, resource I'm going to throw in here. This one's a freebie because I like you. Let me show you this one here. Just in case you forget everything that I've said today, remember this one. Mosey on right on up to the top, right back up to this ribbon bar in the Help tab. Help. There's a lot of help up here. Um, sometimes I need it. And this first icon here, the content tool. Have you been here before? Check this out. Content. It's going to open up on my other screen. So let me drag this over. There we go. That's what will open when you choose the content button in the help tab. It may first open on this contents tab. And it's really easy to overlook this next tab here that's called search. Gosh, I really, really like this one. If I get into the search, I'm going to left click on that search word and I'm going to type in a keyword. So in that search tab, we're just going to type in a keyword. I'm going to type in work area toolbar and here at the bottom, because these are alphabetical, work area control buttons. If I select that in much more detail, this will talk about all those icons in that orange bar and what they do. So you can come back here and read that later. I just wanted you to know where to find it. Oh, here's one more. Who, who are we meeting today? The placement wheel, right? If I type in place meant again a lot of topics come up right it's just going to show you everything that relates to that and it's alphabetical so if i scroll down here we go placement box so when you forget everything i've said today come over there to that placement box and Lots of great screenshots and even much more in-depth information right there. Kind of hidden, though, right? For such a helpful tool, it's the little teeniest, tiniest little tab. So don't overlook it. Lots of good information in there. Okay, now you're armed and dangerous. Let's get back to it. And we will get on to the star of the show, me. Okay, yeah, no, wait a minute. I mean, the placement wheel. Yes, of course. I have a design here that I have staged for us that we are going to finish up together. And we'll use the placement wheel to finish it up. We're going to place and move and copy a few more items and really create a polished design here, you and me together.
Here's the area that we're going to focus on. Let me give you just a little rendering here so that you can see what we're working with. It's always half the battle, right? To get that visual in there. Here's what we're working with. We're going to concentrate on this area within this kitchen. Um, but wait a minute. Do you want to see what we're aiming for first? That might be helpful, right? I have, through the magic of television, um, a finished rendering here. I'll bring that up for you. Here's our finished space. This is probably what maybe your client would have brought in and said, make it look like this, or the vision that you have in your head that we're aiming for. And because you're all detail-oriented designers, I'm sure you're picking up exactly what we need to fine-tune in, in this kitchen, right? To get it from where it is now to where it's going to be. So you're seeing that we need to um, place the, the microwave hood vent, right? Above the slide and range, right? You probably found that already, right? Okay, so we'll use the placement wheel for that. We're also going to fine-tune this dishwasher here. It's kind of tucked in. And we're going to make that a little more realistic, a little cleaner in our final rendering. And then we're going to appropriately space the island using the placement wheel. right? So that, and then, oh, lastly, um, we're going to quickly place lights in the ceiling. Did you see that detail too? In our finished rendering, there's some recessed can lights along with that awesome chandelier that's hanging there. Um, we're going to quickly place that lighting plan in there too. I know, I said quickly and lighting in the same sentence. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to just tuck these away for later reference. And we'll get rid of this rendering for now. We'll come back to it so that we can get into our design. Let's start with adding the microwave hood vent. First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to go shopping. Let's grab a, a microwave. I have a downloaded and installed manufacturer's catalog in my local browser. So just a second and I'll find that. This one will work. There's the catalog I'm going to use. And then um, let's go shopping, shall we? Hopefully it's the one we choose isn't on back order too long. Um, let's see, an over the range microwave, that's what we want. That sounds good. This one looks fine. Perfect. We'll use this microwave here. Okay, so that's just going to hang out. We're just going to leave that in the store for a minute. Leave it right there in the local browser. It can live right there for a second. We've got a little bit more setup to do. Now, this technique will work with any item. I'm just quickly choosing a random microwave, but you can choose whatever appliance that you or item that you'd like. And I'd like to place that, that item, that microwave, below the wall 3021. So because I want to see above and below, I'm going to work in an elevation view. Now, I have all of my elevations staged. Those are open already, right? Because we made elevation views as we're designing. Um, and you know, you just bring your cursor into the placement zone and double left click. Mm -hmm. That'll get you those quick elevation views. So let's hop over to that range wall elevation. I even named those elevations. Uh-huh, I double left clicked on the tab, right? And it brings up the window where you can type in and name that tab, right? That's right, you knew that. Um, in that range, well, there we go, there's my elevation view. Let me just make that a little larger so that, and I'm going to zoom in so that you can see a little easier what we're working with. Now I need to choose that wall 3021 to get the placement wheel to show up. It only shows up when it's needed. It doesn't hang out and clutter up your life like those old spec books or finished samples that you know you should get rid of, but we just can't. I know it feels good just in case to hang on to them, right? But the placement wheel, it doesn't clutter up your life. It only shows up when it's needed. So in order to get the wheel to show up, you need to first choose the item that's already in your design that you want to work with. 
So in my elevation view, I have selected the wall 3021. It shows up in the middle of my wheel right now. He's the center of attention. It's exactly the way we want. And um, we're just going to let him hang out there for just a second because I want to point out just a couple of visual cues for you to be aware of. You know that an item is selected because there's little blue dots on it, right? That's, that's how we know. Yes, in fact, I did select it. When you left click once on an item and um, also check out that my elevation view is is outlined in green it's another little visual cue to remind you that you're working in the elevation view that's where I want to be for this little technique right here that's the magic sauce you can tell that the wall 3021 is selected also in the floor plan view but because this elevation is highlighted in green that's where I know I'm working in and here's one more little side note about the placement wheel. If there's ever a time that you know you have an item selected, there's blue dots on it, and the placement wheel decides to stay home and it does not come to the party, take a deep breath, save your design, shut down 2020, stand up a second, shake it out, and reopen the program and reopen your design, select your item, it should show back up. It's a little sign when the placement wheel doesn't show up that you might be headed for a crash. I know I said the dreaded words. Um, it just means that um, maybe the hardware is having a tough time keeping up with the software or the buffer is full and it can't remember every click that you've made or it's still trying to execute every click that you've done and it's lagging a bit. So just give it a second, give it a breather, save. Remember, you can come up to your little old-fashioned diskette up there in my one-click quick edit bar. Do a quick save or hit the control and the S on your keyboard, S like in save, and do a quick save. Shut down, reopen, you'll be back in business. Okay, back to where we left off. We have the wall 3021 selected. And it's having a great time being the center of attention. So next we get to choose which of the wheels little superhero functions we want to activate and at precisely what dimension it should respond with right here in the offset. So we'll venture right down here below the wheel and at the very bottom of the box we can tell it to add an item. This little miniature box with the plus sign here that means to add or place or we can move an item. This middle button here with a miniature arrow icon is to move or slide an item. Or our third function is to copy an item, the miniature little button here with the duplicated squares. And if you forget which is which, you can just hover your cursor on them, right? And rest a second and it pops up with that little description. In between the bottom buttons and the wheel is the offset box. This is where you can type in a dimension to apply these functions to. Okay, let's watch the magic in action, shall we? I'll select the add button. You know it's selected because it's a little bit orange. And type in a dimension that I need between the existing item that I chose on my floor plan or in my elevation view and the incoming item. In this case, I'm going to type in zero because I want them directly right up against each other. And then I'm going to left click once the arrow in the direction I want that new item to place. In this case, I'd like the microwave directly below the wall 3021. So don't blink. Here goes the magic. Ready? I'm going to left click once on that down arrow and bam, there's the microwave. Just like that cleanly and precisely exactly where it needs to be. No fussing around. You don't have to adjust it. It just showed up. Okay, two more quick little functions with the placement wheel. Are you ready? We can also move items. This middle button will let you move items with the placement wheel. You might find this helpful when needing to make small, precise movements. Here's an example. We're going to look at uh, the view of the dishwasher. I have one saved here. Let's bring up that view. There 
There we go. There's our rendered view of the dishwasher. Um, can you tell how it could present a little bit more accurately in a rendering if it's pulled forward maybe just an inch or two? See this gap here? We can just make these minuscule little precise movements with the placement wheel. I'm going to just slide this over so that you can watch the magic happen live. And I'm going to make this just a little smaller. There we go. Now you can see too, see that gap right here? Okay, let's move that dishwasher just a bit forward. I'm going to left click first on that dishwasher and I'm going to do it in my floor plan because I need it to move um, in and out, I'm not working up and down, right? And over in that placement box, the placement wheel showed up, right? Because I selected that dishwasher. Welcome to the party placement wheel. I'm going to select that move button. And in the offset, I'm going to tell it how much I want it to move. Um, let's put in just like uh, an inch and three quarters, maybe. I'll just type in 1.75. And then I'm going to left click the arrow in the direction I want that item to move. Now, the placement wheel is literal. It is relating to your floor plan or your elevation view exactly the way you see it on the screen. I know as designers we're always thinking about um, if we're standing in this space and is it from the left or from the right. In this case with the wheel it's exactly the way you see it on the screen. Here we go. I left click on that down arrow and if I bring that rendering back up And there in the rendering, you can tell that dishwasher sits just a little more cleanly, a little more realistic in the space. Hits all those details, right? Okay, uh, let's move on to our next little tool, our last one. Let's move the island too, but the island is made of a lot of moving parts, right? So do we select each item and then use the placement wheel to move them all individually? Not on your life. Um, we are much too busy for that. I'm going to take a minute, set up my screen. We are going to select all these individual items at the same time and move the island as one big piece. So to select multiple items, we're just going to draw an area of selection around all of them. To do that, I'm going to bring the cursor way out and just make sure that I'm not selecting anything. So um, I could start here because there's nothing on my floor plan right there, right? It's just an empty space. Or I could come way out here. Again, empty space, nothing, nothing there to click on. I'm just going to left click and hold and drag the mouse. There we go. A great big area of selection. I want you to be sure that you're getting everything associated with the island. Even, even the placement zone, right? All of everything inside these dotted lines, that all needs to come along with us too. So left click, hold and drag. There's my great big area of selection. And when I let go of that left button, Bam, everything is selected. Blue dots everywhere. That's good. I like it. Notice that um, the placement wheel showed up. Welcome to the party. And the island is now the center of attention. There it is. Everything right there in the middle. Now, I would like this island to move to the right just a foot. So in the offset, I'm going to, instead of an inch and three quarters, we're going to type in 12. I'd like it to move 12 inches, please. And then, because the placement wheel is literal, I'm going to click on the arrow in the direction I want that item to move. It's all going to move as one piece. So if I left click once on the right arrow, it took everything, moved it over, and there's our dimension to show. Now I have exact, precise placement everything in that group. Now to deselect those items, I can just left click once off into space and everything's deselected. Nice and easy, right? 
we have one more little superhero function of the placement wheel to check out. So stay with me here. If you thought those other tools might save you some time, this one is going to knock your socks clean off. The copy tool. Here's where those little stacked green triangles come into play. Remember those? Make sure they're activated. They're dark around them. And um, to demonstrate the copy tool, we're first, I'm going to place just a recessed can light in the ceiling. So uh, let's go pick that up. It's in the room fur catalog in the local browser. So let's uh, find that. Here we go. I'll open up my 2020, all my generic catalogs. Here we go. Sample. There we go. Room fur. And I know it says everything's been moved to the cloud. And they're great. Those decorative items are fantastic in there. Um, but there's still some lighting fixtures right here in this local catalog. Just don't overlook it. I'll double click on lighting fixtures. We're going to get into the recessed category. And I'm just going to use this spot recessed light. It's just a generic can light in the ceiling. And place that over here in my floor plan. I'm going to drag it into, into a placement zone, right? So I can designate the dimension where it needs to come in. And I'm just going to place it 42 inches from wall left. Excellent. And then um, let's pull it out from the wall too. So I'll just choose I need it to pull out from the wall. And I'll just keep it simple at 42 inches out. Now here's the key before you duplicate an item. Take a minute and get that item and all of its attributes all dialed in. I'm going to get into the attributes real quickly. Um, your lighting will come in at the default setting at 96 inches for the, for the ceiling, for the height. This design has 120 inch ceilings. So I need to make sure that this recessed can light isn't just magically floating in thin air. I'm going to get into the variables and into the dimensions, make sure I set the ceiling height so that it knows where it should nest. And I don't want it buried in the ceiling, so I'm going to bring it down just, just a half inch. I'm going to go 119 and a half so that it's just peeking out of the drywall of the ceiling, right? It's not buried up there. So now that I know that I've dialed in all of the variables and attributes for that light, I have it precisely placed where you measured or where I measured on the job site, right? And I know that this item is selected. There is blue dots on the corner of it, and it shows up in the middle of the placement wheel. It's the center of attention. I'm going to make sure that this copy button is darkest. So I'm going to left click to activate that little superhero function right there. And in the offset, I need to tell it the distance I would like to duplicate these items from each other. Let's keep it easy. I'm just going to type in 42 inches yet again. And now we can take a spin around the wheel. Remember, it does not spin. We're just going to take a walk around it. So I'm going to left click on the placement wheel in the direction I want that item to place. Here we go. Left click, left click. There we go. And let's go to the, um, that would be the left. A left click. Mm -hmm. All the way around and then back up. And here we'll finish it around the island. Bam. There's your lighting plan. As you took a spin around the wheel, it does not spin, but you can spin around it, right? You can quickly place your lighting and copy items to precisely where they need to be. So let's take a look at the finished product. There we go. We can see our microwave was placed nicely exactly where it needs to be. We have lights in the ceiling. Our dishwasher is pulled forward and prominent, and that island is spaced nicely there, all with the help of the placement wheel. How awesome is that? I hope this was helpful, and all of this week's 
2020 Connect sessions help to make your designs come together seamlessly. Thanks, guys.